hello and welcome back to my channel i am sleepy bug and today we are going to play some more obscura ah! i'm excited <laughs> i'm excited to see whose route we get i am excited to see um just the story because this is this is I'm not playing this because y'all like it. I'm playing it because I like it. But because y'all like it too. So let's do it. The lunar god, lunar ichor, it can't hurt to ask, could it? Churches dedicated to the lunar god exist outside the mountain, but not in any significant numbers. I have seen the eerie blue-green light of glowworms and the smoky gold of lanterns, but I have not seen the sun since I started my descent. Ah, I... Suppose the solar god isn't much help down here. Where normally I would expect to see golden ten points solar sigil, instead there is a more simplistic crescent shaped one, the lunar sigil. But there is one that towers over the rest, a tall church with heavy oaken doors. It's mostly homes built on whatever smooth patch of stone the builder could find. I'm wandering one of the quieter passages, clearly natural by how uneven the ground is, likely the condition it treats. It is rare, absurdly rare, and based on the reactions of those I speak to about it, in some aspects it is very taboo. As for the lunar core, I am at a loss. I wasn't planning to misbehave, even less with Rufus keeping an eye on me. And so that settles the matter of lodging for the matter. A few people in utilitarian masks and what look like uniforms are trying to push their way through. Looks like trouble. Uh, okay, so. Stay and see what We can run back to the church where Sirius is. We can stay and see what happens next or we can leave. I think if we go to the church, we can actually decide to leave um but yeah let's do that first he doesn't seem at all bad at first glance but i don't appreciate the pushiness i feel from him it's disconcerting um i need to leave i can't describe why but i don't really want to stay here anymore i feel much better going back out there and picking the trail back up where i left off there's a whole lot of unexplored areas that are beckoning me. I simply nodded Cirrus, thanking him for his time, and turned to leave the church. Before I make it through the doors, he calls out to me. I never caught your name. Mm. I smile and decide to, in fact, not give him my name at all. And what? He forgot that I was her. He forgot that I was itch, itch, itch. I was her. Anyway, the smell of incense is stuck on the back of my throat even as I left the church. The ruckus that had sent me inside in the first place has dissolved, so I feel confident in my ability to wander in relative safety at least. I follow a moment's impulse and fluff out my cloak, trying to shake off the sweet smoky incense from the church. Cool air rushes in and wakes up my body. Hi. Oh my goodness. You can stay. It doesn't do much for the smell, but I do feel slightly refreshed. Let's keep exploring. 
There are passages I have yet to go through, and I'm certain that the marketplace has yet more wonders to reveal. I don't think for a second that I'll find Lunar Ikor, but there is no harm in knowing the extents of the marketplace. That said, I don't think I'm going to find much here. The businesses here serve much more basic purposes. Tailors and cobblers, and a half dozen stalls selling basic masks. My own, though hardly the most ornate, is probably out of place here still. On nothing more than a whim, I turn and look down the alleyway between a home and some kind of food service. I can see two people hurrying down the alleyway. After a second, I see them duck behind a stall of wooden crates. They don't emerge again. This is probably a bad idea. I walk down the alley slowly, waiting for someone to burst out and tell me I'm in the wrong place. But nobody does. I listen carefully, but hear nothing. Your curiosity is going to get you in trouble, sleepy. Leaning forward as little as possible, I peer around the crates. Nothing. For some reason, I feel relieved. This is silly. I should get out of here. And then I see it. Behind a heap of shattered wood that used to be a crate, there's a narrow tunnel. The walls here are full of tunnels and passages, many of which are dead ends. I've seen tunnels leaving caverns from impossible positions many meters above what anyone could reach. This is probably one of those. And then again, they had to have gone in there, right? Wait, what am I doing? I'm following strangers for no good reason in a wildly dangerous environment. This is exactly the kind of thing I shouldn't be doing. That's the, exactly the kind of thing I'm about to do. <laughs> but I don't move away. What am I doing? I'm desperately curious to see what's through the tunnel. And it's not like I expect to leave the marketplace alive anyways. Why not? <laughs> it's a stupid risk. But my mood is nothing but fatalitism and potent curiosity. Might as well. I climb over the shattered crate and drop my hands and knees, crawling through the tunnel. I don't have a fear of tight spaces, thank goodness, in a place like this. But this tunnel is narrow enough to still unsettle me. For a short time, I am in complete darkness. It is, however, blessedly short. After a minute, I am at the end of the tunnel. It opens up to some kind of antechamber that leads into a much larger cavern. Okay... In here, in the antechamber, there are two more people pressed tightly together, kissing vigorously. <laughs> well, for a moment, I'm stuck. I can't move forward lest I get caught by what appear to be love-struck teenagers, but moving backwards is going to be a challenge. My moment's hesitation gets me in trouble anyways. One of the teenagers breaks away for a second their loose fabric mass falling back over their face, and then they yelp and point. Crap. I try backing up, but it's hard to maneuver in the tight space. The other teenager, also wearing the fabric mask, dives towards me. I scuttle backwards. They scramble forwards. Then they catch my wrist in their grasp and grinch it hard on it. Pisa, help! The teenager tries to get up, and get some leverage against me. I spread my legs wide until my knees are braced against the sides of the tunnel. I won't be pulled out without a fight. The other teen, Pisa, I suppose, stumbles towards us and then wraps their arms around the one who gets a hold of me. Don't let him get away! They jerk my arm with enough force that it nearly dislocates my shoulder. I bite back a shot of pain. I try to twist my wrist out of their hold. We got an intruder! Oh, crap. <laughs> That's never good in this game. Oh, my God. I'm... I'm not getting out of this. This was a terrible idea. 
I really only have one choice. Ow, crap, stop trying to tear off my arm. I'll come out, just don't murder me. As long as you don't try anything. He doesn't let go of me, but they stop pulling. I am able to wiggle out of the tunnel and get to my feet just as others run into the answer chamber to help. Despite my situation, I feel a stupid sort of bravery bubble up inside me. I am at these people's mercy. I don't know how to act to remain in their good graces, so I might as well do what I like. As long as I am giving in to fatalitism, I might as well have fun with it. The teens hold my arms behind my back, squeezing my wrists together. Ow! What's going on here? We have an intruder. I prefer the term unexpected guest, if I'm being honest. Shut up. I knew this passage was getting too much use. It's time to plug it. Good job catching them, Kix. Very good job. You managed to stop sucking face just in time to see me. Shut up. He squeezed my wrist tightly, but that's not about to silence me. Sucking face? Kicks and pizza, I think the name was. They were having a lovely time when I dropped in. I wouldn't punish them too harshly. They're young. They'll get carried away sometimes. Kicks. She's lying. Why would I lie about something as stupid as being caught by horny teenagers? We'll talk about this later, Kicks. You and Pisa get to work. Yes, ma'am. The woman who was talking to Kicks takes over his position, holding my arms behind my back. I know I'm a stranger, but I promise I am not about to run off. Thanks for the promise. I'm still going to restrain you. Fair enough, I suppose. More people gather around. Cure. <laughs> Cure. One of the strangers steps forwards. What? I'm not the boss here. This strange one look familiar to you? No, but I was running from a lot of people. Who knows if this one was part of it or not? What? Honestly, I wouldn't recommend talking right now. You're in a fair bit of trouble. I guessed. I had, I had guessed. Yeah. <laughs> Got a mouth, do you? I sure do. You want to test it out? Go to horny jail. Mm. Well, either tell us what you were doing here or shut it. I was just exploring. There wasn't a locked door or a warning sign, so I thought I'd see where this passage goes. Uh -huh. You managed to find a deliberately hidden tunnel, and your first thought was that it might be fun to explore. You're either lying or you have a death wish. I wasn't particularly feeling optimistic about life today. I'm not normally like this. I think the priest just spooked me. <laughs> priest? What? No, not important. <laughs> Another person steps up to Kier. We should probably just kill her. Keep things clean. The man, Kier, makes a noise of hesitation. Uh, I'd rather not murder someone. I'm completely sure it's worth killing. What if she's innocent? And I am. But then again... I have zero reason to trust you. So you can't murder me, but you can't leave me alive? That's the conundrum. Just do it. We need to stay safe. Mm. My heart starts to pound a little faster. Whatever, bra whatever bravado I had is fading. I think we can find a compromise. He turns to me, and I, I take in the deliberate void of his mask. Either way, you're an innocent who wants to live, or you're some kind of snitch who we need to keep from snitching. That's the shape of things. You really don't know how to shut up, do you? Never learned how.
We're gonna be on a live. We're gonna be six feet under. Because we can't stop talking. Anyways, the important thing is that we need to stay safe. And you knowing how to find us puts a noose around our necks. So we just need to put a noose around yours. I don't like the sound of that, Kier. We can work it out. Look at you. I love redheads. I love red. I have a thing for redheads. Sleepy. Editor Sleepy, pull up all my thing for redheads. Don't kill. Don't kill me, Mr. Kill, please. No, I expect not. You know what we are? Some kind of underground community? Probably criminals. Thieves, I would guess. Well, we can't kill someone that quick to figure things out, can we, Griff? We could. <laughs> but we won't. There is a sudden, loud, clattering noise as others begin the process of blocking the tunnel I snuck in through. Ugh, let's go to the square. The person holding my arms back pushes me forward until I am following Kira and the others into the main cavern. There are dozens of homes here, built so close together that's hardly enough space for a road. I can see other people watching through their windows. We stop in an open space, surrounded by some of the more sturdy-looking buildings. My arms are mercifully released. Not that it matters being completely surrounded. Where were we? Keep quiet. Answer. Um, since we're already sassy, let's just go ahead and answer. You were going to decide whether or not to murder me? Right, that's it. If I can offer my humble opinion, will I be able to stop you? No. Fine, then. I'd rather not be murdered. <laughs> Kier. Kier, I would rather not be murdered. You are fine. You're fine. I'm fine. We can be fine together. We can be fine together together aggressively flirts to live no it is we can't afford to keep her i don't like griff whoever he is <laughs> if her wits are fast as her mouth she'll be worth it are you trying to recruit me is that what we're doing a recruit suggests you have a choice of the matter and i don't do you want to live? Message received. Yes, sir. Whatever you say, sir. I can feel my nerves getting twisted tighter and tighter. We're thieves, as you correctly guessed. And we need some help. You help us, we let you go. And since you'll have worked with criminals ratting us out, we'll also guarantee your death. What? What? We're not popular with the beautiful people. The amount of scorn in his voice is shocking. And they prefer to kill a thief before they have a chance to escape. And that's the noose around my neck? That's the noose. Work with us. You get the same target on your back as us for as long as you're down here. That's... It's a devilish choice. Die now, or have a knife in my back for the rest of it. I only have one option. How do I know you'll keep your word? What's your name? I hold my tongue for a moment, more to show my hesitance than anything. It's sleepy. Sleepy? Do you trust me? No. <laughs> Around us, the crowd burst into loud tittering. Why y'all tittering? <laughs> Hold on. Why are you guys tittering? Huh? I'm gonna go in with blind faith. I trust you. The word is up before I can think about it. Mm, yes. Kier turns towards me in a single abrupt motion. Around us, the people have gone past tittering 
and are fully gawking and gossiping. The heck? What other choice do I have? You didn't give me a choice. You said die or die. I chose die. I ch I'd rather die with a hot guy than die in general. Not trusting a stranger. He sounds utterly gobsmacked. If I recall, I don't really have a choice in the matter, do I? I might as well trust you for all the good it'll do me. Kira makes a few choked noises. By the lunar god Scars. He definitely exasperated with me now. <laughs> but I am not about to stop needling this idiot. Are you suggesting I should just distrust you and face my own death? No, you should definitely listen to what I'm saying. But you shouldn't be freaking trusting me. Very well. You're a criminal and a scoundrel. I don't trust you. I have no choice but to join your gang regardless. The crowd's chattering fades. I can feel the knife at my back, the noose around my neck. What is it that you steal? It won't change anything. But I need to know. Art, money, medicine, rare goods, people. People? <laughs> Are we stealing people? My gut drops. You don't become that kind of criminal that gets killed on sight for no reason. They seem to notice my sudden silence. There's a quiet moment. Everyone around us seems to be coming to the same conclusion as I am. I am cornered. I don't have a choice in this. I keep my voice flat and neutral as possible. Not really. No. Then what do I do? You run a few jobs with us? Get that noose good and tight. Here. Stop it. Get some help. And then, if you want to leave, you get yourself a new identity and leave. You already put on a mask and picked a name once, right, Sleepy? Right. Then you can do it again. You sure about this, though? Yeah. With Gubs down for the count, we need a new lookout. Sleepy's got it what it takes. I sure hope you don't think that counts as a compliment. When I compliment you, if that ever happens, you'll know. Jesus. Good to know. And we're not using Eve because... Because Eve is 12. Don't be stupid, Griff. Fine. I'll do what you need and then I'm out. Hey, no need to make it sound like a prison sentence. Am I not being held here against my will? Prisoners don't get paid. You will. What? We're pragmatic. We're not monsters. You do work, you get paid. Can we really afford... Yes, Griff. I've heard we're getting our favorite visitor in a few weeks. We'll all be getting paid. Heck yeah! I like Griff. <laughs> what do you mean... Paid? Caught your attention, have I? I think it's fair to know what my wages are gonna be. The number Kira gives is not gobsmackingly high, but it's not low either. A few jobs can make some comforting living at the Leaping Bear for a long time. Then again... The number Kira gives is not gobsmackingly high, but it's not low either. A few jobs can make for some comfortable living at the Leaping Bear for a long time. Then again... It won't solve my big problem. Good enough. I have a counter offer. I have a counter offer? The idea in my head is half formed, but I have to pursue it. Uh huh. Are we negotiating? You're a thief. Yes, that's well established. Which means if I. <clears throat> Which means if I want something instead of money, you could get it. Depends on the thing. Ooh, he probably would be our best bet to get the um, the Lunar Core. That's interesting. I really like Carrie. He's cute. I guess I like them all. I want to collect them.
It depends on the thing. Lunar Ecor. The crowd around us burst into a flurry of whispers. Well, at least they know it's important. Kira's voice changes suddenly, the timber low in a way I can't interpret. You need Ecor. I do? For what? Why should I trust you enough to say? Rude. Blackmailer! There's a long pause. That's a lot of jobs we're gonna have to work to earn something that pricey. Would I be able to get enough money to buy it? Not in your life, I don't think. Not with us, at least. Then working for you is my best shot at getting it. Mm. Griff suddenly pulls on Kira's cloak and leans in. There's whispering and I am not nearly close enough to hear it. Then they separate and Kira runs a hand over his mask. It's a gesture of pure exhaustion. <laughs> Fine. The whispers rise in intensity. You work with us, you get your ecor. He holds out a gloved hand. He's gonna kill us. We're gonna get killed. We're gonna die because of Big Daddy Kier. <laughs> you see those arms? I wanna bite him. I wanna bite his arm. We have a deal. I slowly reach out. He clasps my hands and we shake on it. Deal. I'm tempted for a second to think this was way too easy. But it really wasn't. Kira calls out into the crowd. Someone go with her to get her things. Pardon? We can't have you sneaking in and out all the time. It's too dangerous. We just finished moving here as well. So I live here now? You'll get a room of your own. Eventually, a volunteer comes forward. Together, we sneak out of the hidden community and return to the Leaping Bear. They refuse to talk to me and just follow me like a shadow into my room while I gather the few things I left there. Some clothes, old knickknacks I've managed to acquire, my hygiene supplies. Then it's time to return the key, I'm sad. Hello. Oh, Sleepy, it's good to see you. Ready to pay for more time? You're definitely the reliable sort, so I can offer a good rate. Um, not this time, sorry. I found somewhere else, a little closer to my goals. I dropped the key on the counter in front of her. Thank you, though. The leaping bear was becoming a bit of a new home for me. Runa was quiet for a second, and then she dropped her voice low. So low I can barely hear her. Do you need help? If that shadow of yours is unwelcome, Rufus can remove them. What? Oh! Oh no, things are fine. Rufus doesn't need to do anything. I'm fine. My new arrangements came as a surprise, but I did say yes to the offer. Never mind what happened to duress they put me under. Never mind what kind of duress they put me under. I did agree. Good then. Never liked seeing my clientele go places they weren't interested in going. Thank you for staying with us. Bruna's voice is a little more full mode than I'm used to. I suppose now that I'm leaving, I will likely never see her again. It's a little disappointing. I have no real bonds here in the marketplace. But I was getting used to the leaping bear. Bye, Rufus! I picture Rufus as the guy from Tangled. The one who um, likes cute things. Goodbye. I leave, my shadow close behind me. Eventually, they take the lead, guiding me to another hidden passage. How many ways of sneaking in and out are there? As we enter the cavern again, someone is there waiting for us. Hey. My shadow answers quickly. Don't mind us, we're just here to polish some sunstones. Then I'm being led back to the tight network of paths between closely built homes until we're stopped in the square again. Kier, I'm done being a babysitter! I see Kier. Or at least his mask turned to face us. Already? You don't have to sound so annoyed. I didn't have many earthly possessions to start with. 
Getting them was easy. Good. We found a room for you two. You'll be staying with me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll stay with you. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Care is the only one with space to take care of a stray and make sure it won't bite or escape. A stray? Griff. Sleepy as a person. Use her name. The way he says it, it sounds like this is a frequent topic of discussion. <laughs> My home is small, but I get lots of guests. What you doing? Big Daddy? Why are you having a lot of guests? <laughs> I become the young <laughs> So, I keep a spare room. Then, I suppose I should thank you for your hospitality? It would be nice. Maybe later. <laughs> Kier suddenly stand next to me and pats my back right between my shoulders. Ooh. Let's get going. I've had a long freaking day, and I need to take a break. Are you even gonna be able to relax with a stranger in your home? No. But it's nice to pretend. I love him. <laughs> Sirius was, uh, Sirius was major, um, I will listen to you right now, sir, and I will not object. Kier is fun. He's just fun. I really like him. <laughs> we start walking. By the way, welcome to the mouse hole. Oh, that's cute. What a name for this place. <laughs> The twisting paths between the buildings are a tangled mess, and there is no easy landmark to orient myself with. Further from the square, the homes and businesses, such as they are, are packed so tightly together that the blue-green glow-warm light from above doesn't reach us. Oh. Instead, the warm flicker light of lamps and lanterns fill the pathway. It's dim, but at this point, that is hardly a problem. My eyes are certainly used to the constant glow of the marketplace. Here we are. <laughs> it's one home sandwiched tightly between two others, near indistinguishable from the rest. The only identifiable thing I notice are the closed shutters, painted blue instead of a simple sealed raw wood. Painted blue instead of a simply sealed raw wood. Kier unlocks the door and holds it open for me. Oh, he's a gentleman. Inside. I step in, it's small and cramped, as anyone would have guessed. But when Kier lights the lantern by the front door, I can see that it is a comfortably arranged space. None of the furniture matches, <laughs> but all of it works in some odd of cluttered harmony. Compliment his home? Stay quiet. I like his home. I think that's cozy. You have a nice home? That was nearly a compliment. I suppose I'll take it. I want to bite his arms. That's all I can give right now. <laughs> That's all I can give right now. At least I can say that I tried. There's a water closet behind that door. If you use the water up, you'll have to get more. I'll show you where after I get some sleep. Your room is there. The key is in the lock. That's the only key. Don't lose it. Understood. Understood. <laughs> He's like, God help me. <laughs> if you buy and keep your own food, that's fine. Otherwise, you contribute to my budget and share what I get. Any other rules I ought to know? Don't be destructive. Don't make racket while I'm sleeping. And if I leave? Go around the neighborhood as much as you like. If you try to leave without an escort, expect the watch to notice and stop you. You don't seem to be that stealthy, so I wouldn't try it. Noted. And rude. I'm gonna have something to eat before bed. You hungry? Can I sit in your lap and eat it? I'm glad he can't see the surprise on my face. Are you sure? About letting you have a snack? About keeping me here? Oh. Here's the thing, Sleepy. 
I'm not that worried about you murdering me in my sleep. My door is locked the same as yours, and honestly, a term arrest isn't exactly something I'm dreading. Kier, no! <laughs> is he alright? Is he alright? Is, is the boy alright? Is the boy alright? Someone check, please. He chuckles a little. If you decide to make yourself into a problem, we can find somewhere else to put you. Griff knows a pretty obscure tunnel that goes straight down if you're really unbearable. If it's all the same, I'd like to avoid that. It's easy enough to think of this as just another guest house that Kier is no worse than Rufus. Intimidating, but ultimately harmless. <laughs> he steps towards what I assume to be a cooking space. The counter is exceptionally cluttered, but he is able to find his goal with ease. A shallow wooden bowl. Here. He takes a handful of whatever it is from the bowl and then hands it to me. This is... Deadly poison. Eat up. A closer look tells me that it's actually an assortment of dry fruits. I'll take a few. No harm in getting a snack. Is he about to kill me? Cause I trust too easily. I said cute boy. He won't do anything. No harm in getting a snack. I take a few and Kier puts the bowl away again. He doesn't reveal his mouth as he nibbles instead threading the fruit under his mask. And I'm doing the same. Well, get yourself some rest. Don't murder me in my sleep. I'll resist the temptation as best I can. He makes me go. Kier departs suddenly, taking himself and his handful of dried fruits into his bedroom. I hear the lock click decisively and I am suddenly alone again. Frida indulged my curiosity privately. I do a quick tour of his front room. Kier certainly made an effort to make this a livable space, but that seems to be as far as his efforts have gone. Not much for entertainment here, is there? Maybe he doesn't have friends over much. Maybe he's living in a cave and trying to survive. I continue nibbling the sweet <laughs> I continue nibbling the sweet <laughs> I continue nibbling the sticky sweet tart taste coats the back of my tongue my search is quick in the end it has to be with so little to look at I slip into the dark guest bedroom as though I am an intruder for a moment I feel like I am it has the same cozy but spare feel of the main room, not a space I could call my own. Door locked, I give myself permission to relax. Kier could very well have a second key to this room, or choose to break or bypass the lock in some way, but there is little use worrying about it. I'm already so keyed up from stress that adding the possibility of being murdered in my sleep could make resting impossible. What have I gotten myself into? I've been recruited into a gang of thieves against my will. A gang that likely steals to survive, but there's one thing that leaves me deeply uncomfortable. Griff said they steal people. Could I live with myself helping to steal people? There must be a good reason. There's no good reason. There's no good reason to steal people, but I am going to click this because it seems like I'm going down good girl route. It feels desperate. It feels like trying to find the silver lining of a hurricane. It feels desperate. It feels like trying to find the silver lining of a hurricane. But I need, for my own sanity, to believe whatever Kira is doing is for the best. I swallow hard, trying to chase these thoughts away. I'm not going to sleep at all, am I? I follow the motions of getting ready for bed. I even take off my mask. Though, I am careful to lie down with my back to the door. And after some hours of trying to find a comfortable position, I must have fallen asleep because Kira wakes me up with sharp knocks to the door. In the days that follow, I get used to the pace of life in Mousehole. I am 
room, as promised, left to my own devices for the most part. I can sense people getting tense when I drift towards any of the mirrored exits, but I am not about to test my luck with an ill-considered escape attempt. Here, it seems, is a popular one. He's constantly being called this way and that, attending to roof repairs or settling quarrels. But this is only when I see him, which is quite rare. We are, quite often, ships that pass in the night. In my first days, I was largely ignored. None of the regular residents wanted to interact with me. I have to admit, it nearly drove me mad. But once I proved to their satisfaction that I am not a deranged maniac, <laughs> the people seemed keen to get an additional set of hands to their work. I've chopped vegetables and hauled water and watched babies and held a lot of ladders in place. It's not hard work, but it conquers my boredom and gives me a chance to make small talk. Sleepy, I need a hand. On it. Shell, one of the friendliest people in Mouse Hole, is stacking crates near an exit passage. Not sure much how I can help. I don't think my reach is longer than yours. I just need a little more support so I can... Oh. They do a short hop and shove the crate into place. If you've got time, I could use a hand a little longer. My schedule is packed. But I can skip social engagement or two to help. Shell's chuckle is gratifying. Very funny. But aren't you going to the strategy meeting soon? S strategy meeting? You're running lookout, aren't you? I believe that was their arrangement. But this is the first time I'm hearing about- Hey, sleepy. We gotta talk strats. We go to devil. Looks like I'm doing this on my own. I wouldn't want you to skip that social engagement. Thank you, Shell. Maybe there will be some barrels we can roll around later to make up for this. I think there's an empty one around here somewhere. The kids took it to roll each other in. That I would love to see. <laughs> Are you ignoring me, Sleepy? Not in the slightest. You know how much I love talking to you. Are we enemies to lovers? Bye, Shell. Bye. I make my way towards Cure. I'm a little more comfortable following him through the narrow, winding paths of the mouse hole now. What were you doing there? I'm trying to give Shell a hand? Makes sense. Shell's always find a good task to get the kids involved in community work. You're probably right. But I resent that remark. <laughs> anyway, get moving. Everyone's waiting on you. You say that like I deliberately dallied. This is the first I'm hearing about a meeting. Then we'll need to fix your communication too. Hey! Waiting for me to ask, When are you holding a secret meeting? I don't even know if it's a possibility. It's not reasonable. Yeah, yeah, get moving. We duck into one of the buildings on the square. Kier has to duck particularly low. The door frame is unusually short, and he is a fairly tall man. Hey, Kier. Finally found her? I wasn't hiding. Found her just fine. Thanks. I wasn't hiding! Aww. I'm so sad. Oh, they would have such cool character designs. I take a seat with several other individuals. The room is extremely dark, even for an underground room. But I think I can see hints of being a pub or bar of some kind. Real quick, Sleepy. These are Lave and Halo. You already know Griff. Terrible seeing you again, Sleepy. Likewise. One of the other two gives a slow, casual wave. Lavernia. Call me Lave. My girl here is Halo. The other one, Halo. Gives a near imperceptible nod. She's leaned in close to Lave. Not the talkative sort of couple then. Okay, Griff, what's the brief? We've got a commission. F off. Kier's already approved it. Don't worry. It's fine, Lave. Griff gave me the full rundown of the client. We've got a commission to relieve the auctioner of a few choice pieces. Absolutely not. Not the auction. I'm not crazy. The auctioneer. Oh. That means crossing the ruby walls. The what? 
You've done that half a dozen times. It nearly died each time. We're not dead yet. Not you too, Kier. You're supposed to be sensible. I am being sensible. This is a huge potential payoff and we have an in. I'll keep listening. I don't really have much to say. I'll just be like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. But that means we have to kill the auctioneer. Remember the auctioneer? They were actually kind of nice. I liked them. I don't fully understand, but I am not about to interrupt this discussion without a good reason. Fine. We'll do the extremely dangerous job behind the ruby walls. That's the spirit. So, we crossed the walls. Easy. And we all know where the auctioneer's house is. Ours is in the new building being done at the club next door. It's an easy climb from there to the balcony, which doesn't have a lock. You and Halo are gonna find it and lift the pieces we are after. Kira and me are gonna be a defense and distraction. And Sleepy will have to live up to Gup's example. Not a terrible plan. Not a good plan either. Halo's voice is so ghostly, I'm not entirely sure I heard it. Obviously it sounds dumb without the important details. Griff draws a map on the tabletop with a stick of chalk and carefully walks us through each step. For the most part, I understand. My role is, if nothing else, comically easy. Stand by, signal if there are other people around. <laughs> okay, you with us, Sleepy? I don't have much of a choice in that, do I? He's asking if you understand. Almost everything. Almost. I've gleaned that the auctioneer's house is on the level above a pleasure parlor. Something you did not explain. But I don't know what the ruby walls are. How do you not know that? I've been under the mountain less than a month and you're locals, that's how. The ruby walls are a series of walls that have a vein of raw rubies in them in the main market cavern. There's a gate that theoretically anyone can go through. But in practice, it's a space in the rich and beautiful? Exactly. And it's heavily guarded by the walls, hence the danger. Yep. No, I understand. And in the future, you'll speak up immediately if there's something you don't know. You're always telling me not to talk, and now this? I'm serious. I'm not risking my own neck to save you if you're in a stupid situation. You get in trouble, you're on your own. So I'm an acceptable loss? Exact, let's get ready to go. The four of them stand up, I follow their lead. My cloak is just barely fine enough to be worn around the ruby walls. But the other four have taken a chance to fancy themselves up. God, back in these awful things. Kier holds up a heavily, richly embroidered cloak. Imagining him in this is comical. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing at me, sleepy? Yes. <laughs> ha! And you wave? She shrugs. She's right, you look stupid in that. <laughs> it doesn't match. It really doesn't. I keep telling you, buddy. you made of iron, not silver. Griff's already in disguise. Like you want to talk. You look like a child going through daddy's closet. Ooh. Griff's short stature and casual posture leaning into Kira is completely at odds with his jeweled hood and satin cape. Knowing what he looks like, it honestly makes it even funnier. You look like- you look like you wrap Satine without a lantern. Leave him be doing it. <laughs> Me and Griff have beef <laughs> in a good- in the- We have beef in the most friendly way though, not like- not like Drake and uh, Kendra. I'm gonna join in. You look like a pillow effed a jewelry box. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> Lev bust into laughter, mostly at Halo's response, I assume. Sleepy. Oh, oh no. 
<laughs> He's a cutie pie. He's gonna let us die. K reaches over, taking hold of my shoulder, and holds tight as he curls into himself, choking on laughter. Laugh it up. <laughs> After a second, Griff looks at me. <laughs> it wasn't that funny. You just surprised them with vulgarity. Kira pops up, a smile in his voice. Nah, it was a bit funny. You really pull it over the top, Halo. <laughs> oh no, I... Thanks, Halo. The laughter dies away a little, though the mood has definitely been lifted. Things settle down again. I don't know why I put up with you. Kira pats his shoulder firmly. Neither do I. There's some more scattered laughs, but the atmosphere in the room slowly turns more serious. Halo and Lav are checking each other's disguises and showing their weapons are not visible by passerbys. Kira is checking over his own knife carefully. It's beautiful and likely quite old, unlike the rest of his daily wear. Should I be armed? It's not a good idea, obviously. I am a rank novice and would be far more likely to be stabbed with my own knife than use it properly to defend myself. Still, I cannot help but feel a twinge of fear. A knife won't make me feel less frightened. But it was hard to convince myself of that fact. The rest of the preparations happen in anticipatory silence. Ready? Let's move. We walk in a loose group to yet another exit. I have yet to fully count the ways in and out of the mouse hole, but there must be at least half a dozen. It's another narrow passage that leads into the back room of a shop. From there, we can exit through the storefront and step into the busy walkways of the marketplace. Look alive. In any other circumstance, we would be a deeply strange group. A gang of well-dressed strangers walking together, but not talking. But this is hardly the strangest sight in the marketplace. There's a bird mask contortionist performing in a tiny cage, and a pair of drunkards fighting in one of the crossroads we walked through. Things are lively as ever. We pass Sirius's church on the way, to the most central caverns. I hurry my pace, ever so slightly. As we enter the largest cavern, the heart of the marketplace where I sta started my journey, we walk close together. Alright, you know the drill. Split up. We meet across from the pearl choker. Sleepy, you're with me. Yes, sir! Good luck. Lave and Hela are gone in a second, melted into the crowd. Griff glances back at Kier for a second before doing the same. You don't trust me to not run off? <laughs> not in the slightest. Plus, you're new to this. I might be able to give you some pointers. What makes you think I'm new at this? You're paying a lot of attention to small details. The kind that are easy to ignore when you're used to this work. Fair enough. It's fair. It's fair. You caught me. You got me. I never planned a theft before. I never worked in an organized group to steal before. I do not believe we have never stolen anything. <laughs> um, I never worked in an organized group to steal before. I never worked with others in a project like this. But you have done this kind of work before. I thought we were supposed to leave our surface lights behind down here. Leave it behind all you like. You're still quite comfortable working with us. Well, you have to survive somehow, right? And I doubt the auctioneer is someone who will suffer greatly when we're done with her. No, you won't have to feel bad for her when we're done. She's someone who would sell literally anything if that meant getting a cut. And what will we do with our finds? Sell it to a different butthole who would do anything for a cut? I think you'll like him, though. He's got a tongue as quick as yours. Is that all you think I am? Maybe if you talk less, I'd understand you more. Not a chance. <laughs> Worth a try. The flirting is astronomical. And here are the walls. Take them in. My first impression is that they're nothing special. 
Stone walls about twice as tall as the average person. Smooth enough to be nearly impossible to climb barehanded. And then I noticed the flickering lights. The rubies in the stone have been dug around and polished, where they sit as they catch the light. They glimmer like candles, but the color is richer and redder than any fire. There are hundreds, possibly thousands of them. It's subtle and beautiful. And here's our gate. Brace yourself. Kier seems to set his shoulders and march forward, leaving me in a hurry to catch up to him. Beyond the ruby wall things, beyond the ruby walls, things are still busy, and it's not as though there's anything to muffle the sound of the rest of the marketplace. But there is still a noticeable change. The rest of the marketplace has people hawking their wares, shouting at potential buyers and conjoling them to buy. Here, here, the people standing in front of businesses don't shout. They offer samples or display their wares, pose at and flirt with passerby, but there is no shouting. I suppose if you have a business here, you don't need to shout to get attention. It really is different. There's nothing in the world like the jewel box. It might have been said in admiration, except Kira's voice is oozing with bitter disdain. Kira and I walk side by side, taking a few turns to avoid direct path to the pearl choker. He stops to look at perfume bottles and little ivory statuettes. I pause near a window, blazing with light, a lantern shop. You know the plan. I know the plan. You know where to hide. I know where to hide if you foul up everything. But you won't, will you? From your lips to the moon. I want to wish you well. You'll stay safe, won't you? I have no plans on dying. But what about dreading eternal rest? I'm not afraid of dying. I still don't want to. With my luck, I'd get done in and it'd hurt like crap. Then you'll stay safe. Kier stops and turns to me. We're stones in the river of people around us who pay no mind to us. Kier reaches out and then gives me one, two soft pats on the top of my head. You know what? At least this one isn't uh, freaky. Like, uh, <laughs> at least this route's not as intense as uh, Sirius's. Sirius's was intense. This one's not that bad. I actually really like it. Kira reaches out and then gives me one, two soft pats on the top of my head. Thank you. I'll stay safe. You haven't seen half of what I can do. His voice is warm and confident. At the pearl choker, Kira slips away from me to enter through the front door. I slip between the pleasure parlor and the neighboring gambling hall. Both businesses are high class, with beautiful fronts and charming staff, and I swear I can hear a live band from one of them. But it doesn't matter how pretty the buildings are. All alleyways are the same. There's a vague sense of grime and hostility. I'm definitely not breaking any rules, but I'm also certainly not welcome here. That's never stopped me before. If things have gone to plan, Lave and Halo broke into the apartment above the Pearl Choker by climbing the new attachment at the gambling house and jumping the gap. Griff and Kier are going through the inside using a staff passage, and I am keeping watch, signaling whether the alley's clear or not through a simple set of gestures. Holding one arm, there are people in the alley. I'm writing this down. Where's, where's my, where's... <laughs> I don't trust it. <laughs> Holding one arm, there are people in the alley. Holding both arms, there are guards or staff in the alley. Arms relaxed, no one but me here. Just in case. Just in case. It was not complicated, but I do have to keep an eye on both ends of the alley and signal consistently. Ideally, all four of them will jump the gap and climb down the gambling hall's addition and we'll separate to reunite at Mouse Hole. 
If we need to run, I even have the turns I'll need to take in the crosswords memorized. Straight through the first crossroad, left, then left again, right, and then if I won't be seen, I go into and hide in the butcher's shop. Burn into my memory. We're fine. At least I have a plan. I lean against the gambling hall wall. There is one made of stone, beautifully cut and polished and scratched with all sorts of graffiti. It will never change. Always marking that someone has been here. That Agatha has a beautiful chest. That Darwin has a wonderful stroke game for his mates. Delightful. I'm alone in the alley. I drop my arms and wait. My stomach turns with discomfort. I feel a cool neutrality. My body is buzzing with excitement. Um. I don't feel super nervous because I trust Kier. Like, <laughs> I probably shouldn't. And he definitely talked to me about this. I'm not excited because who's excited? I'm neutral. I'm neutral. I don't enjoy this life, but I'm not upset to be here. Would I choose to be here on my own accord? Probably not. But to get the Looney Accord, I'd do anything. At least this is something I can tolerate. But for the moment, I have to put those feelings away. For a short while longer, I am completely alone. There's a stranger wobbling into the alleyway towards me. Hey. Hey. Mind if I smoke? Not at all. Want any? She holds out a little patch of herbs. I recognize the sight of it. Sweet grass. I've had plenty of it times before, back on the surface. You smoke it with others to build bonds. As loose herbs like this, it softens the hard edge of stress. Not enough to addle the mind in any way. Just enough to make connection easier. I let my arm rest against my torso and grip my elbow firmly. Sweet grass, right? <laughs> You'll know it. Every teen learns to grow it where I'm from. Lucky you. I only found the stuff down here. Um, no, I want to stay... I want to stay... sober... in order to not... We ain't doing no substances. It's a kind offer, but I have to say no. Fair enough, more for me. She rolls her tab with quick, clever fingers. Even if it's new to practice, she's clearly gotten good at it. She strikes a match. I, I can smell the faint sweetness of the smoke. I keep turning my gaze to either end of the alley, still focused on my mission. What are you here for? So I feel like if we, I feel like if we don't answer, we're gonna we're gonna seem a little suspicious, and they're gonna call the guards. Um, buying. What you buying? Nothing as of yet. And you? Heard there was a fortune one in the gambling halls every hour. Thought I'd try my luck. And how has your luck fared? I'm about to get a big win. I can feel it. Not well, then. May the lunar god smile upon you. Oh, you're a loony? There's a few people milling near the hall entrance. I can't tell what sort of people they are. Yeah? Well, most people here are. The lunar blessing felt appropriate. The solar god makes everything perfect. The lunar god ruins everything. And then the people here worship the moon? I was never one for theology myself. Whatever. One of the people at the end of the alleyway starts coming in. Big, confident posture. At first, I can't tell if they're armed, then I see a blade. Um, both arms. They get closer. Hello. Any reason you're loitering back here? Oh, I didn't realize we were loitering. We were just having a break. Yeah, we were sharing some sweet glass. Want any? She's rummaging through her bag, but the stranger cuts her off. No. They point at me. I didn't see you in the hall earlier. I wasn't in the gambling hall. Then where have you been? Here. Proof. 
Well, I've been here with her for a while now. Mind if I ask a few questions? Go ahead. Definitely some kind of security force. Did you come here alone? Come where? This alley? To the jewel box. I came with a friend. I came alone. I'm- I'm nervous! <laughs> That's what I am. Okay, people saw me and Kier walking, so yeah, I came with a friend. Oh, no, I came with a friend, but he wanted to do certain things, and I didn't feel like joining him. You know how it is. Their posture betrays nothing. Then I saw my new friend here with some sweet grass, and she offered to share some. That's what happened? Yeah. Put that out and go back in. I'm not done yet. I'm talking to this one alone. It doesn't sound like they're going to brook any argument. You have a win waiting for you, right? Yeah. Yeah, good, um, talking to you. Likewise. She leaves and I'm left alone with this member of the security force. Keep holding both arms. Is there a problem then? Routine check. Do people not stand around alleyways in the jewel box? Not unless they're looking for trouble. Well, I seem to have found some. I'm just looking for some quiet. I just want some quiet. Some peace. Some peace. I was just looking for a little bit of quiet. With another person? Better one than hundreds, I would say. The stranger doesn't look amused. Why are you here? In the jewel box or in general? The marketplace. Buying. And you had time to wander around? Turns out not everything is for sale all the time. I'm waiting for a shipment to come in. That should be enough truth to convince him. And what have you been doing while you wait? Seeing everything the marketplace has to offer? Oh, I've been everywhere, even if I'm not buying. It's incredible to see everything that there is to offer. The staff at the Leafing Bear have had a very good time advising me where to go. No answer, but that's better than a bad one. Open up your cloak. I am scandalized. What? I need to check you for dangerous objects. Um, okay. I don't- Oh, I don't have a knife. Okay. I think I didn't take a knife. <laughs> I open my cloak and put up with the security officers examining with almost intimate closeness by lantern light. It's uncomfortable, but there's only so much I can do. I did consent to this. Technically. As you can see, I am just an ordinary traveler. I agree that you're not carrying any weapons. You're free to go. Sorry? You can leave now. My first instinct is to tell them I want to stay here, but that's not gonna go over well. I'm waiting for someone here. Then wait in the tea parlor across the road. Clear out. I'd rather not. They stare at me. I suppose they're trying to parse exactly what I'm thinking. You've been cooperating, so I'm going to extend some courtesy to you. Once. Get out of here now before I have to take you in for suspicious behavior. I freeze. I can't leave. But staying is also no longer an option. I'm almost grateful that this is the moment someone chooses to leap from the balcony above and land in addition to the gambling house. It's Kier! He came to rescue me. Kier. It's Kier. He lands and before the security guard can say a word, a knife <laughs> flies past my head and stops in the officer's gut. They fall, gasping. We're compromised. Run. Oh, crap. Man. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> my panic set in. Hold on. I don't even stop to think. I just move. No one's raised an alarm yet as I sprint from the alley. But me sprinting away from the gambling hall at full tilt, it's inherently suspicious. Other security officers start pursuing me. Oh my god. I reach my first crossroad within seconds. Straight. 
<laughs> I sprint straight through the crossroad, plowing through a cluster of people listening to a musician on a corner. I could swear my pursuers are getting closer. Another crossroad. Uh, left, 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 turn left. Okay. I can feel the ache of exertion settling in my muscles. I'm not close to safe yet. I'm not slowing, but the security officers chasing me seem to be getting faster. I nearly collide with another random passerby. Uh, left. Right? Yes, okay. My legs and lungs are burning. Stop her! The general apathy of the crowd around me means no one will help me. But no one seems to be keen to help security either. Hey, right. Bless the moon! Even so, one of my pursuers is getting dangerously close. Gotta shake them. Create obstacles! I spot someone selling an assortment of chairs, with several tall stacks within reach. I can't help the words that come out of my mouth. Sorry about this! I grab a stack and pull it down as I pass, then another. There is a fearsome racket of wood on stone, the surprise shouts of people passing by. And a quick glance back shows that none of the security guards is close to me anymore. Almost there. Uh, right? Right? I know what I'm looking for. And thankfully, the security guard is just far back enough they won't see me. Um, the butcher. I practically tear the door open. I need sanctuary! <laughs> sanctuary! <laughs> the hunchback. Sanctuary! The front room is thankfully empty, and the butcher is quick to jump to action, letting me into the back. The room is chilled with blocks of ice, and there's a faint smell of blood. At least there's a f roof to keep the cold in. I have to fight to keep from panting, the air harsh against my throat. I feel lightheaded from the sudden stopping. All of my blood is in my legs, and that's how it feels. You're hiding here. The shopkeeper opens a wooden chest, empty, and pulls out a bottom panel. There is a deep hole under a false bottom, a natural gap in the mountain stone. It'll be cramped, but I am in no position to complain. Thanks. Ooh, child. Stress me out. Happy I wrote it down, guys. Happy I wrote everything down. I climb in, and the butcher puts the false bottom back on the box over me. I hear him pile a few things into the chest and then close the lid. Someone is pounding on the stone counter in the front room. The butcher must go back to the front room because I can hear voices, but not the words being said. I close my eyes and strain my ears. I can hear my pulse, but also people coming into the back, footsteps. Words are still difficult to make out. I cover my mouth under my mask and try to breathe silently. Please. Please. There is a loud banging and I inhale sharply. I almost choke. Someone's kicked the chest. I'm hiding under, not enough to disturb the false bottom, thankfully, but still. The lid is opened. I don't move. I don't breathe. I keep my eyes closed tight and my mouth covered. Please. The lid is closed. The footsteps get further away. <laughs> In the darkness, I pull away my mask just enough to run my hands down my face. It's back on when the butcher comes back to get me. My god. That was stressful. My stomach is a nut. <laughs> you stay in here? For an hour or two, if that's alright with you. Don't touch the goods and you can stay. Thank you. A few hours in the cold, alone with my own thoughts, is not fun. But it's a relief compared to the escape I just endured. When I feel the coast is clear, I leave the butcher shop and make my way to a safer side of the ruby walls. I have to meet Kira and the rest now. When we reunite, it's in the rundown pub in Mouse Hole. Okay, everybody's alive. Hey, Sleepy, what took so long? I was hiding in the butcher shop waiting for things to cool down. Why were you... Kira. Kira. He is lying to me. It's it's the muscles. I always fall for the muscles. I'm always for the pretty boys. Good job hiding, Sleepy. You just got here ourselves. I realize exactly what's going on a second later. Here, you piece of crap. Fine, take it out on me now. 
Did my running around as a distraction actually do anything? It was a guarantee. You were duped. Kier wanted to be absolutely sure we'd be safe and used you to do it. And risk my life in the process? If anything went wrong, I would have been killed. You would have. <sighs> I'm not heartbroken. I'm not heartbroken. I'm fine. His cool acknowledgement only serves to heat up my temper. And you didn't hesitate for a second. To send me on an especially dangerous, unnecessary job just because I'm your least favorite? If you're not making a list of which of us get thrown off a cliff first, you're not thinking far enough ahead. Kier. Anything else I should know about then? Are you gonna feed us things to check for poison? Or sell me to get intel? F off. You're the one who decided I'm disposable. <laughs> actually heated. I'm actually heated. You're the one who decided I'm disposable. I just wanted to know how much. I knew you weren't going to get killed. You don't need me to tell you that you're quick thinking and fast on your feet. I could rely on you to be a distraction and let the rest of us get out safely. But you couldn't let me know what I was doing? No, I couldn't trust you to do it. Oh my god. Heated. I'm pissed. <laughs> I'm so upset. Remember when I was like all hard eyes five minutes ago? Talking about I want to bite his arms. Only thing I want to bite now is his throat. Well, I guess that doesn't make sense. No, I couldn't trust you to do it if you knew what I was asking. Maybe I just won't do anything you tell me to do then. Unless I understand why. I cross my arms. <laughs> Kira can't see me seething, so I settle for communicating in posture instead. Drinks on us! <laughs> One of the servers, a barmaid with pretty hands and a full flat moon mask, delivers drinks to our table. I'm pretty sure her name is Delight. Thanks, babe! Don't make me regret this, Griffy baby! I love Griffy. <laughs> Griff will be on his best behavior now, right? Yes, he will. He almost sounds like a chest-sized child. Kira lifts his drink to a successful run. The other raise their tankards. I don't want- I'm still mad. How is game me not still pissed? Because I am still pissed. <laughs> How dare you? Kira, you're on my, you're on my crap list. Um, I will toast with water. I don't feel like alcohol. I want to keep my head clear if I can. I raise my water glass. The glass clinks and we all drink. Well, show us the loot. I think we've earned a look at our prize, right? Yeah. Halo and Lave go through their pockets and drop some small things on the table. God, scars. That's the stuff. Griff turns to the server. We got a couple good necklaces. Nothing wild, but we're not going to turn our noses up to that, right? I love Griff. Some compass stones, a few rare coins that I know will go to a good home. And the bit we got commissioned for? A genuine witch ring. A witch ring? Are you serious? That's the grave. Oh, that sounds very impressive. Maybe even worth putting our lives at risk for. Witch rings give power to the wearer. The longer you wear it, the more power you get. It's just about the only magical thing that won't ruin your life. Well, it won't ruin your life directly. But there's a lot of fighting over them. Yep. And that means people are willing to pay a lot to get their hands on one. What a treasure. You're telling me, D. Halo puts away the spoils of our adventure. 
And when good old Hemlock or Absinthe or whatever he's calling himself these days shows up, payday. You're gonna be rich, Sleepy. I can hear him smirking. The drinking goes for hours. I hear lots of songs and more than a few stories about other gigs they've done. Halo eventually brings out a deck of cards. Being the only sober one playing, I get to wipe the floor with everyone else. It's my payback. This is my villain origin story. Kira is my villain origin story. Do not touch me. Don't look at me. I want nothing from you. Nothing. I want nothing from you. Then Lave yawns and she and Halo go home to rest. Griff follows the server who I now know to call Delight into the back. Let's head home, Sleepy. I'm not going anywhere with you. I feel exhaustion seeping into my bones. Let's... Kira stumbles into me as we walk. I can't find it in me to be bothered when he bumps into me for the third time. I'm tired. Not just from the job, either. The marketplace is an exhausting place to be. The words fall out of me before I can stop them. I hate your guts. You're a real bag of... You're a real bag of bananas, you know that? Tell me something I don't know. Just a terrible piece of work. And absolute wreck of a person i wouldn't trust you as far as i could throw you i wouldn't trust me and i could throw myself pretty far he rethinks his choice to show me how far he can throw himself just in time anyways am i a bag of bananas this time i could stand to be in a lot less danger you think i don't feel bad about this whole thing if I could snap my fingers and tomorrow no one would get murdered if the beautiful people found Mouse Howl, I'd do that instead of making you work for us. But I don't have magic snappy fingers. <laughs> no, I'm mad at him. I'm not, I'm mad. Not even sure Mouse Howl is the first thing I'd save with magic snappy fingers. He's so drunk. N no? There are people getting sold in every auction, and that's just the legit stuff. The marketplace is heck sleepy, and a lot of people would never know it. And why are you stealing people? Griff said that you steal people sometimes. You time it right, you can steal a person who's been bought and let them free. Their family gets money, and they don't get tortured to death. I knew there was a good reason. Kira stops and stares at me. You honestly think we've got it in us to buy and sell people like they're crap? When we're all just the crap off the streets already? A bag of bananas. Human trash pile. Hideously awful, but compellingly handsome. That's all fine. I can live with that. But sacrificing a life for my own happiness? Never. Good. Yeah, good. And what about you? I'm not keen on being a bag of bananas, but it's better than being a monster. No, not that. The magic snappy fingers, what would you save? The Don trodden the mouse hole? Myself? Um... Uh... I think I would save the mouse hole, because everybody's so nice. I choose the mouse hole. The Don tried it. I choose the mouse hole. Well, if you're going to be all noble, I might as well be the hero of the mouse hole. You're going to steal my whole home from me if you do that. My home now. And you wouldn't save yourself? What? You want a lunar core. That's it for you, right? Yeah. Why? What is it for? Mm. Oh, why not? <sighs> it's called Fractum Anima. It's an extremely rare illness. Deadly. Eventually. It's not a quick killer and it does a lot of other nasty stuff. Not really a fun post-job chat topic though. I'm sorry. It's not your fault I'm sick, right? 
No. Still sorry all the same. Thanks. It feels good for someone down here to know about it, what I'm going through. The house with the blue shutters is right before us. He puts a hand on the wall of the house and murmurs something softly into the walls. Then Kira unlocks the door and lets me in. Welcome home, sleepy. Welcome home, big daddy. No, I'm mad at him. He doesn't get, he doesn't get my... He's still standing in the doorway. It's an unresting image. This man who is ruthless and generous in equal measure. Welcoming me into his home both as kindness and blocking the door because I'm a prisoner. Then he reaches for my face. I refused to flinch away, and instead of touching my mask as I feared, he dropped his hands to my head. Is this gonna- he's so big. <laughs> Is this gonna be a habit of yours? He pats the top of my head once and twice. Might be, yeah. I'm not a child. You're not. He doesn't stop. You're sure fun, though. Thanks. He huffs out a little laugh. <laughs> Despite everything, you're a good egg. Despite everything, you talk too much. You're sarcastic and mouthy. Point taken. But still, good egg. He takes his hand away. Alright, enough of the sappy stuff. I'm tired. He closes the door behind him and heads into his room, scooping up a snack. <sighs> I'm left alone in the room. I'm exhausted. But I do feel a weight coming off my shoulders. For now, that's home. Oh, I got the best end! Best end. Welcome home. I have words and I have thoughts. As always though, this game is so, 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 so good at like building atmosphere and making you feel like panicky. Because that whole heist, I'm like, hey yo, what's about to happen? <laughs> it did such a good job at creating atmosphere and also I've never seen a game make you fall in love with characters you didn't even know the faces of. Not like like know the faces of, but like the character design. Like we can see Kira, we can see uh, Sirius, we can see what we look like, Vesper. Like it, but like the um the bear, the um the owner, and then Rufus. I love them. I don't even know what they look like. The heist group, Griff. Griff is my favorite. We're, Griff is... I love Griff. Griff is fun. We love our short king. Definitely would like to fist fight someone no as here. He pissed me off. <laughs> I know he had to do it, but he pissed me off. <laughs> How dare you? I think I got spoiled with Sirius. Sirius was very, um... Sirius seemed like a very, like, uh, he seemed, I can't let you know certain things because we need to protect, like, he had, like, a, I keep things secret to protect you, which I also hate, but Kira is, I keep things secret and I'm gonna kill you anyway. 
and that was his best end. Ghetto. Ghetto. But I would be lying if I didn't say that I wanted to bite his arm. Not in a some type of way, but in some type of way, you know? Anyway. <laughs> chef's kit like it was just such a great game um i am going to make another game with all of his endings um so we have two more routes and then i'm gonna get the rest of kier's endings in the next video yes i i just i adore this game a lot a lot like i i might be a little obsessed with it because i i found myself looking at the tumblr looking at the creator Make sure the game is always linked below. So if you want to um, play or if you want to download the game yourself, make sure you go and get it out the link. It is 18 plus. So keep that in mind. Um, oh, another thing about Kira's route is it wasn't as freaky and I appreciated it. I needed a break. I'm serious. I needed a break. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anywho, I loved seeing you. I love spending time with you and just know that day by day, moment by moment, we are a blossoming flower, calm, collected, and fragrant. Thank you so much for staying with me in this moment. And I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, night, wherever you may be, and that you can stay sleepy and stay cozy. And I will see you soon. Bye. Bye.